We're going to fix my trolling motor. That's it. Let's get after it. So this is my motor guide XI5 60 inch shaft pinpoint GPS trolling motor. That's it right there. All right. This is what we're going to be replacing on it. And we're replacing the circuit board. There it is right there. We're going to be replacing the GPS. We're going to be replacing the curly cable, basically the power cable. And I'm going to go ahead and be replacing the, uh, the assembly head for the top of the motor, guys. Here's the problem that I had with my trolling motor. All right. This is the remote control that I use. I use the handheld remote. So, the trolling motor turned on. The trolling motor appeared to engage the GPS. However, I couldn't confirm that because uh, the only functions on this particular remote other than it turned on, it would turn right. So the trolling motor turned, spun to the right. It did not spin to the left. And none of the other functions of the actual trolling motor worked. Uh, so anyway, with that being said, I went online, I did a lot of research I didn't get a lot of symptoms, okay, from the gas. It's hard to reproduce something or, or recreate it uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot a situation. So that's why I'm sharing that with you, and I really want to emphasize that to you. So that's, that's essentially what I'm trying to tell you. So that's what happened. That's the contents. That's the background. So I reached out to Mercury. I guess they're made by Motor Guide because all these parts are made by Motor Guide, all right? Um, and they came up basically with the same conclusion. The same conclusion was, hey, it could be your GPS and it could be the circuit board. Well, hell, for all I know, it could be the remote. Now, with that being said, I'm going to start here with the remotes, try to troubleshoot. Uh, I took the remote. I keep the remote inside with me. Um, but even with that, you're going to get corrosion from batteries. I've been really good about maintaining my stuff. I try to make sure I change the batteries out, you know, every season. Or I take the batteries out, this and my power pole. Sometimes stuff happens, the batteries will definitely um, give you some issues and you'll get some, um, you'll get some erosion happen. So I cleaned it, the inside of the circuit board with the batteries connected didn't give me an issue. It was clean, had a little bit of corrosion, but honestly nothing more than what I expected. I cleaned it up, I replaced the batteries, and like I said, the remote seemed to be functioning because it did connect. So... I eliminated the remote at this juncture. Don't know if it may be. All right. This, I believe, the circuit board replacement, I believe, may be the issue. All right. But with that also being stated, I just decided that it was more cost effective to upgrade and replace these parts within my trolling motor. All right. At this time. As of April 2021, pandemic, all that fun stuff happening, um, parts availability, I decided to replace these parts. Why? Because this particular trolling motor, I really like the operation, I like the functions that it provides, and I like how it performs, all right? It just needs some, some maintenance and it needed some stuff to be upgraded and replaced. What's great about it is that here we are five years later from the time the motor that I received, the components seem to be made a little bit better. And, by the way, um, even Mercury puts out some product service memorandums, all right, to show that they've actually replaced some of the functions or upgraded some of the functions from the previous model. This particular motor, if you want to buy it brand new, it's $1,850, between $1,800 and $1,900, I've seen up to $2,000, uh, you can purchase this, all right? I got this with my boat. I'm no stranger to trolling motors because I've had bass boats and I have replaced trolling motors. Trust me, I've upgraded and done it. The cost benefit to me was I spent, and this is a, it's ugly, I spent six hundred and roughly fifty dollars on these components to repair my trolling motor, as opposed to buying a new trolling motor at eighteen hundred dollars. 
So the logic there in this was cost savings. Uh, plus, I'm going to do the installation myself. Um, you know, marine mechanics, marine maintenance technicians, these guys are expensive. I'm not knocking you, but y'all are out of control, all right? Again, not knocking you, but it's expensive, all right? There's nothing about a boat unless I absolutely need it to make a living, uh, at least from my perspective, that is uh, utilitarian. In other words, I need it to get back and forth or to, to make a living. My boat is for my pleasure. It is for fishing. So, yeah, you got two chains of thought. One, you spent a lot of money on boats, so, oh, well, bust out another thousand. Or you can take the initiative and try to figure out what's the best way to mitigate the costs of maintaining your boat. And I attribute this to maintenance. I'm not scared to take it apart because at the end of the day, um, these guys have a great return policy, number one. Number two, I have a manufacturer's warranty for these parts. So now I got two years on this. All right, two years on these parts. These are uh, the parts that, from what my research has, has been, have been the most culpable for any issues that you have with these particular trolling motors, all right? So again, the GPS, this uh, control board, and the dry rotting from these, from these cables. Um, I try to offer a little bit of insulation against that um, to, to mitigate that by, by wrapping with the neoprene covers and stuff like that and uh, washing off my boat as best as possible every single time I get off the water because I do primarily work uh, or utilize my boat on salt water. All right. Um, basic tools to conduct the repair. I did not need any special tools. Uh, Phillips flathead, wire cutters, um, you know, needle nose. Uh, I did get some of this antioxidant compound. Let me see that. Ooh. Whatever, dielectric grease. But I got some of this to apply to the control head, to the uh, connectors, um, to make sure that, uh, that it's secured or uh, uh, covered, whatever. And then I got some of these uh, butt connectors. Um, these are the ones that you can actually apply heat to with a heat gun to help seal it. Obviously, in a salt environment, I'm trying to get the max ability to seal and prevent any corrosion. That's super important that I have found. Corrosion will wreak havoc on your equipment. All right, that's it. With that being said, hopefully I gave you uh, the prop, the symptoms. You know, so far what I did to troubleshoot, now let's just go ahead and just get into it. Um, a disclaimer, all right? If you do anything to your boat or whatever you do to your boat, that's on you, not me, okay? So if you see something that I do and you try to do it and you jack your stuff up, suck it up, buttercup, I don't feel sorry for you, okay? It's what I do when I go in trying to fix or repair something. Hopefully you learn something out of the deal. Hopefully you get to take away something, and then most importantly, you get your butt back on the water so you can do more fishing. I do a lot of fishing. I don't do much catching though, but I do a lot of fishing. So. This, this is uh, one of the portions of the GPS, okay? Top portion. These are the wire connectors, okay? For the power and of course the GPS. I want to give you an update. This is what I've done so far. Hold on. I've removed the head assembly. Okay. This is going to be replaced. Head assembly is going to be replaced. I've disconnected the top portion of the GPS puck. That's the top portion of the original. Okay. And I've disconnected the electrical cable, which I'm going to be replacing. All right. Those are the two things that I've done so far. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go down to the base unit where I can access the um, the control board, and I'm going to I'm going to remove that. And also, that's where the connections for the other half of this is going to go. And then hopefully, 
we'll go ahead and put everything back together and we'll go ahead and test it so that's where we're at right now okay tracking cool let's do it all right so removing the lower portion components is a little bit more involved but it's not much more difficult phillips flathead i got big phillips because they got some bigger screws um some wire cutters kind of it okay uh, no special tools uh, i want to go ahead and let you, i'm going to show you okay so all right so what we're going to do is i i right here this guy i'm going to remove this part over here this is the uh the, the, the motor mechanism here all right you have to remove both these sides they've got screws on both sides okay on the side temp on the side plates we want to get to this area right here okay this cover and and the inside is what has that that main board that i want to replace as well but you got to kind of take apart some stuff in the inner room, all right um so not hard you can take apart this side the other side all right i'm going to push i'm going to pull this out because it's easier for me to work um you, you can do it without doing it but i just found that it's easier to work in this area okay there you go so here we go so we're gonna go in here this is what we want to get inside and, he, and here's the funny part this kind of pops off a little bit here uh this particular top right here is held in from the sides all right you see this little ridge here i had some trouble putting that back in so just be careful when you're removing or putting that in um or doing anything with it in particular and the reason i say that is because as you can see here so it's disconnected from the main from the board which is fine because i'm replacing the board down there as well but just be careful if you do remove it that this particular piece right here which has the little leds that give you an indication of power on motor uh gps and battery life okay and that's going to connect to the actual uh, main control board but anyway so it popped out is what it is but i've taken out a couple times so here's your gps the, the other half the other gps puck right here here's your electrical cord right here you got a slot where it's going to fit here's where it connects the gps board uh connects to your uh control board inside there all right here's where your electrical your electrical component your uh excuse me to your battery connects to your control board you got two two areas okay and there's an actual slot where you can go ahead and put it in there great thing about video is well i'm making a video and i've already got plenty of pictures i've done on this already so and i believe this is your antenna uh so be careful when you're removing that as well to get to the components inside here okay so with that said i'm just going to start taking stuff apart um and then i'll be putting everything in in reverse order so here's the gps puck um it's run it's routed to a little area over here uh and uh this disconnects to your nema network but i think you also have to have like a a connection kit which i don't connect it to my gps or i, I don't connect this to my fish finder but if you do i think this is where everything goes so here's the here's the puck it comes out all right i'm gonna disconnect a little little uh, little connector here that you unscrew <clears throat> it's it's hand tightened so it's not as difficult I just might my, my hands are beat up from uh, working outside <laughs> Okay, so connect this connects relatively quickly. Here's your here's your GPS puck right there. And then if you can see the electrical cord mm -hmm. uh, is sitting inside here. And then you've got this plastic component right here, this plastic cover, which slides out. Like I said, I have pictures of all of this. So with that said, 
just make sure that you have taken pictures or you've recorded or things of that nature I'm gonna go ahead and have to unscrew the uh, power cable power cable is connected here and it's routed through here all right disconnect that power cable and then it's also connected back back here all right what I do like is that it's routed it's got extra um, Got extra cabling the way the way it's set up the power cable. So you see the power cable is routed through here, comes to the back of these whatever resistors or whatever. Um, there it is. So it's removed. Okay. So you can see short end. You, you dork this up. You really do dork stuff up. So you got a short end connect to the to the uh, control board and long end connects to the other side of the control board. All right. All right. So. I'm gonna pop this out. Be careful as you're shimming these things out. They pop out. Boom, there it is. Now, I wasn't gonna get a new one of these, but this one definitely has seen better days. But it serves its purpose. Alright. Here's another portion of the control board that's gonna be replaced. Um, I believe these are all antennas to receive obviously signals things of that nature so there you go there's the control board right here so we're gonna also replace this and uh, where the other electrical connector was in here was also connected to the power cable in here so there's two cables that are connected to this control board I'm gonna remove the other cable And then there it is whoop there it is so there you go there's your electrical there's the other GPS puck there's the connector all right so this is gonna go bye-bye now what I want to do is take the control board out it's simple it's got four screws got a little bit of blue Loctite on it the semi-permanent uh, if you want to put some Loctite on it go go for it yeah I've never had an issue with these coming loose it's up to you of course you keyboard warriors will somebody make a comment if you make a comment be constructive and be respectful because they will talk about your mama all right so here we go there it is Control board's out. You've got two connectors right here. Okay, these two connectors go into this motor servo. It looks more like a, it looks like a servo. And it, and they unplug. They've got two small cannon plugs that unplug from it. All right. Let me do a quick comparative between this one and the new one. And it's got this uh, static shielding on it. I recommend you don't un or you don't remove this from the packaging until you're getting ready to install it. And you have everything laid out that you're going to install it with, okay? So, I learned that long time ago. So, there's the old, and this is the new. Alright, let me see if I can give you a better layout. Uh, as you can see, the new control board is significantly different it really is um, this particular component right here is no longer sitting on the back of this it uh, it's self-contained here on an additional bracket let me see if I can they've, they've reoriented things differently so I'm trying to show you the best I can so here's your antenna um, there's the previous one okay Whoop, yeah, that's great. Just drop it, why don't you? Uh, it's got these four um, resistors, looks like. 
This one had five. Uh, same control uh, out connector. Uh, this is what I was telling you about. Make sure you verify. So this was female, female connector, male, male connector. So these should be made it up no problem. And it even comes with the little cannon plugs that you can pop them in there. Okay. And then of course uh, this is your connection for your for your lights to display your uh, your your systems if they're online or not online. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And then here's the other component. What's great about it is uh, they sent me new hardware, so I really appreciate that they did that. And uh, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this. Bye bye to that one, and we're gonna pop this one in. All right. Uh, I think. Let me make sure it's <laughs> try to orient it correctly. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oh, and then that black coating is being replaced by this silver or gray coating. And I'm sure it's also had some additional upgrades internally. So I'm gonna put this to the side very carefully. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the new hardware. Why not, right? Oop, there it is. So there you go. And then here's here's my new hardware. Ooh, fresh and so clean, clean. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and secure, and secure the board to the trolley motor. Si, sí, muy bueno. And, and by the way, guys, I don't want to, I want to tell you, you know, don't torque things down super, super tight. Um, I know that's sort of the first inclination, because that's my inclination. I want to torque the sucker down. It's a trolling motor. Should be like, uh, you know, everything should be solid and super duper. That's just not the case, folks. Um, you know, so you get it secure. And I'll let you be the judge of securing. I'm sure there's some technical specifications written out in a manual that tells you how tight tight should be. Uh, I don't know. I've been doing this long enough to kind of figure out what tight, tight is. And I've broken enough plastic components and, and jerry-rigged enough stuff to try to make sure that I fix it correctly. All right. Rock and roll, man. That looks pretty doggone good right there, don't it? All right. So... With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can actually get this. Oh, let me move this forward. Uh, push this back up in here. Let me see what I got. Because I got to do some comparative analysis over here. I believe that this actually goes here like that. It goes over here. Just like that. And um, does this have an adhesive backing? Yeah, I believe it does have an adhesive backing to it. So um, I'll wait to apply that in a minute. Let you guys come along for the ride. Because uh, I ain't going to lie. I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. i just done it a lot. So I guess I've jacked this up enough times to kind of know what right and wrong looks like. Does that make sense? Excuse me. Does that make sense? I mean... Okay, well, it makes sense to me. And then this particular piece doesn't look like it's actually needed anymore. Uh, because that portion of that antenna component was actually sitting up in here like this. Let me show you. So, be careful. Just to demonstrate to you. That sat up in here like this. But because that is seated now in here in a clip. Hallelujah, press alert. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect these as well. Alright. And let's go ahead and get you slippered in right there because I think it's going to look pretty good. I think pretty much so when it does, when it is doing right there, I think. Uh, this has got a little component, a little slot up in there where I can, uh, where I can actually seat the circuit board, the uh, the board itself. Okay, so make sure I'm slide it in there. 
as you pop the stuff back in there you want to make sure that you know you're not crimping anything that shouldn't be crimped or you're not not crimped per se but you know you're not making a mess in here and you're not about to mess something up so I'm go ahead and pull this up in here a little bit since I got some room uh, for these little cannon plug these little plugs that connect the board to the to the uh, little motor servo I know I might be dorking up the names but you, you guys know what I'm talking about right okay okay so there we go so I gotta make sure I still have plenty of room so that I can put my GPS remember I still gotta pop the GPS puck inside of here don't make no jokes because I know where you're going with the puck right you got jokes I know you do because I got the same jokes <laughs> all right so uh yeah wow good so finally so they kind of sort of whatever did their engineering piece so I'm actually going to wait until I connect everything back up to put this put this back in does that make sense I think it makes sense but anyway that's what that's where it's gonna go so I'm just gonna sort of put that as a placeholder right there boom all right so that sits inside there so all right that portion is in it's seated let's go ahead and start putting in some uh, some cables all right I'm excited for that so just to show you right there see that this is gonna slide right back inside here all right um, actually it's gonna slide slide up in here because this is where it's routed all right so we got one here and one here and actually that's that's interesting all right so one here and one there all right so cool beans i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and secure uh what appears to be the um the negative or the ground Oop, there it is Oop, there it is again Mess it a little bit. All right, that's one. Okay. So there you go. And now what I'm waiting for is the connector for. You gotta be. You're gonna be replacing stuff simultaneously. So here's the GPS puck, and then here's the power cord. All right. I'll put the part numbers in in the description below, okay? So you guys can have it, and I'll even send you a link to uh, to where I ordered it from. And like I said, I'm not getting a flipping dime. I paid for this all out of my seat. deal with it okay you want all this free 99 then you won't have to contend with my singing hey you gonna wrap this up later man i ain't gonna show you how to wrap a flipping cord around another cord okay i'm not gonna insult to you some people get butt hurt because they don't like that uh, this is crimped on here the way it is uh, i'm not gonna get butt hurt about it okay y'all i'm gonna suck an egg um, I don't know. I guess you're the same type of people that organize your sock drawer. So here's your diadelectic, diacolectic, di whatever the hell you want to call it, grease. Okay, it's an antioxidant. That's what it does. All right, I'm gonna apply this after the fact. So don't bust my hump about it. Right. All right. So here's uh here's your first electrical connection. 
It's got the connection. Wait. Let me. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Cletus. If you need a little assistance, uh, I like to use a screwdriver. And sometimes, dare I, use some needle nose pliers to pull that through there. And let me see, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Here it comes, here it comes. Whoop, there it is. I thought you knew. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Alright, so. Uh, yeah. There you go. So. You see that? Did you see that? Well, alright. So here's what I figured out. Alright. <laughs> it took me a minute. But, um. So the new GPS uh, puck. I mean, essentially goes in the same way. Just, uh. Like I said, it's just a little bit smaller. So I had to. I was finagling with it. But you've got your cable routed for your um, to connect to your uh, to your um, LAN, and then you've got a slot down here where you're going to fit your connector, okay? And then here's your little um, your little drop right here for your power cable so that it doesn't get crimped up in there, okay? Um, lots of stuff to stuff in there, but. Uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and button up the wires make sure everything is good to go so you've got your power so here's your red red to red right you've got two connectors on the board red to red here and then your white is gonna go here okay to the second connector and you've got the two small bolts all right and just remember that this and the red go together can you go together like yeah I did it none of y'all remember that though do you I know you don't. Alright, so so you carefully um won't carefully uh, put these in here. Alright. There you go, there's one. Yay! Alright. Be careful you don't um you know you don't pinch the uh, the other wires, okay? Cause you're in a really close, you're in, you're in a really tight little spot that you're working in there, okay? So you can just, you know, just make sure. Just be very cognizant of everything that you're doing, man. Alright, don't be in a rush to go nowhere. And don't be afraid to get in there and do it, okay? Just, just knock it out. Alright, there's one. Okay. And then here's the second one. Just a little bit, a little bit more uh, cumbersome, but I'll just fit the screw to the first one, do the second one, and then try to line it up. Whoop! Line it up. All right, rock and roll, man. I guess I should also say that make sure when you're connecting these. With the older wires, you don't have any corrosion and things of that nature that, uh, see, I messed up already. Uh, see that, that excess slack right there? Be careful with that because the way this was originally routed was this went behind these little circuit, these little uh, resistors in there, okay? So again, just be very, very ginger. You can tuck them back there. Tucks back no problem. Here is my, here's the screw, and I'm screwed, where'd it go, where'd you go? Well, because you know, that's what's supposed to happen. Alright, so I dropped the screw down in there, it must play hardball with me. I'm gonna grab my little grabber thing, I'm thing a bobber. That's the uh, technical name is the grabber thing a bobber. Oh, look at that. Um, I could have used the magnet. I for some I don't use the magnet because I've had situations where I have actually uh, used the magnet to retrieve something working in elect with an electrical circuit board, and let's just say it didn't end well for me. So let's see if I can get you get you situated over here. 
over here. And then we pop you in here like this. There uh, we go. Alright. You know, what's happening? What's getting this? What's the old saying? Eh? If, if it ain't. If it was easy, everybody have it. This was not easy. So there you are. There's the GPS puck. Um, there's the control board, the new control board. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this little antenna control, this little antenna thingamajigger, thingamabobber there. And if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's going to go on there like that. And I think this is, I want to say this is probably peel and stick. I may be wrong, so don't laugh at me. You can laugh. I don't care. I may not catch no fish, but I won't get lost. <laughs> I get lost. I will. I have gotten lost. Oh, Lord, have I gotten lost. Yeah, look at that, man. Check that out. It's a little sticky with the sticky with the E. Alright, so. Whoop, make sure you got that lined up really good there. Okay. Boom, there you go, man. That's looking pretty darn good. I think I'm going to take a sip of my favorite drink. Well. I'm, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, saying we're cooking with fire. All right. Uh, la, 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 la. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my my uh, antioxidant compound to any of the screw heads that I've applied to have an electrical connection to them. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. And and when you see when the board came out the first time, it was like super just drenched in it. I guess the, the lesson the lesson there was uh, more is good, and it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, I always try to put some protectant on the batteries and stuff of my boat and my truck, my boat batteries and things of that nature. So yeah, that that certainly does not hurt my feelings. Um, I've read on some of the forums that you you got to be cognizant to put this stuff on there uh, because if you don't because this this gets up this gets like super super hot um, and you can melt your board so the four dollars or yeah three or four dollars that I paid for this stuff and um, is certainly well worth the expense even though it's a bit messy it's messy but it does not hurt my feelings at all. At all does not hurt my feelings at all. I don't know. I just made up that song. All right. So I've made a mess. I've played a li I've put a liberal amount of this antioxidant compound. Got me some shop towels. And we're well on the way here. Uh, what they were saying, they, I say they, uh, what I've seen in some of the, um, some of the comments or stuff is basically you wrap, I'm wrapping the wrap, the, the, the coil around the coil, yeah, so yeah, just kind of how you see it when you come, comes out of the manufacturer, or when you get it, you get your brand new little trolley motor, this is how it is, I mean dudes, it's, it's not hard. I'm going to make it harder than it is, of course, because you watch. I say this, and next thing you know, I'll be like uncoiling it and cussing. You won't see that on the... You might see it on the outtakes. Should I do outtakes, guys? I'm going to do outtakes. I'm going to wrap this up really good right there. It's going to be wrapped up there. There you go. So now, so the cord, so here's the head, the puck head, GPS puck head. There's the electrical cable. It runs inside of it. See, there you go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the top 
Those are the screws. Here we the screws. All right, I'm gonna replace the top. Make sure you obviously plug this back in so that you actually have an indicator, a series of indicator lights when you turn your stuff on. Pull this out really quick. Make it easier for me to get this on. Okay. Hey, be careful you don't bend these pins either, man, because the, these little pins right here bend relatively easy. Um, and my eyesight is, is not as good as it used to be, but if you line up the, uh, the plugs, line up the plugs, li you know what I'm talking about. You I do. Ladies and gentlemen, you are getting a play by play. There you go. It is connected. And I'm going to pop this. I'm going to pop this bad boy. I'm going to pop. I'm going to. You know what I'm talking about. Pop this bad boy back in here. In here. And a little slide of my, slide of my thingy. That's a technical term. Okay, folks. Y'all needs to be technical. Alright. Being careful to pop this back in here. Alright, remember this just sits on here for now until you secure it. Until you secure the ends uh, of the trolling motor, of the sides of the trolling motor, okay? So there you go. Everything fits back. And if it doesn't, you got something bulging on here, then you need to go back and double check it, okay? Alright, so I'm going to reapply the ends, make sure this is secure, and then we're going to go ahead and do the head assembly. Okay, guys? Alright, stand by. And, uh, yeah, hey, motor guy, FYI, I'm doing everything right here. Um, but, gotta be honest with you, this is not the most fun aspect of it. Children, don't do this at home. I mean, you can. It's on you. If you do, I'm going to recommend you set it to the lowest torque settings. So that way, even if you do over torque it, you hear that? You don't break it like a knucklehead although I've been known to break a couple of these time and again good lord man come on now 